Hello and welcome to another Alien in Gaming Tech video. I'm JP and today we're going to take a quick look at the Voxilab Proxima 6 inch resin 3D printer. Now we're going to go over the specs, what's in the box, the pros, the cons and my overall opinion of this printer. And spoiler alert, it is a very good printer. So without further ado, roll that intro. So what is a resin 3D printer and how does it compare to a normal filament 3D printer? Well, with a resin printer, you don't use reels of plastic that's extruded through a hot nozzle, but instead you have a bath of liquid resin that turns into a solid when exposed to UV light. So here's an example of a filament printer. And as you can see, as it's printing, it's drawing each layer individually and then moving on to the next layer. And here you can see a resin printer that can basically print the whole layer all at once and then moves on to the next layer. So now we have a basic understanding of how a filament printer works and how a resin printer works. So let's talk about the specs. So we have a 2K monochrome screen and this gives a total build area of 13 centimeters length by 7.8 centimeters width and 15.5 centimeter height. Now it's very important when choosing a resin 3D printer that the build area will suffice for any projects that you want to do on the printer. There's nothing worse than buying a 3D printer, going to print something, and then you just can't fit it within the build plate. Yes, you can cut 3D objects up and stick them together, but that defies the point of having a high quality, high detail resin 3D printer especially if you're going to see the join lines. So the Proxima 6 is quite a compact device with a width of 230 millimeters, a depth of 200 millimeters and a total height of 410 millimeters. So the printer itself is quite compact. You're not going to struggle finding somewhere to place the device. On the front, you'll have a three and a half inch touchscreen display, which is used to do all the configuration and to start the printing. On the right side of the printer is a USB port and then on the back of the device is the power inlet and the power switch. So what's in the box? Well, you get the printer itself, you get the power cable, a quick start guide, an after sales service card, the power adapter, some form of USB stick, not necessarily a sand disc like you see in the picture. You get the build platform, some latex gloves, a tool kit with everything you need to adjust the build plate, paper funnels, a metal scraper, and a plastic scraper. Now there is some additional things that I recommend buying when using the printer. One paper funnel is not enough so buy a pack of a hundred or a thousand and one set of gloves again is not enough. This is just to get you started so also grab a pack of a hundred gloves. It does get messy and I'd also recommend getting a silicon funnel to make it easier for once you've printed something there is always excess resin. You can pour that back into the bottle because resin can sometimes be expensive. You may also want to buy some kind of UV lamp. It just helps with the curing process once the print's completed. Now, while we're on the subject of resin, there's two main types of resin that you can buy. There's the standard resin, which needs to be washed with isopropyl alcohol, and then there's water washable resin, which is what I use here. It's a lot easier to wash something in water than messing about with isopropyl alcohol. So here is the resin that I use and I'll put a link in the description below so you can find it yourself on Amazon. I really highly recommend this because it's a good price and the quality is really good. So how easy is it to use a resin printer compared to a filament printer? So my first printer was a Flashforge Pro and I had no end of problems configuration and settings and dialing it in just to get a half decent print and even then the print lines were quite bad the amount of times that I set it up seven hour nine hour print I'd go back to it and it was just a spaghetti mess and I'm pleased to say I had none of those issues with a resin printer the most difficult part is just setting the print bed level and that's as easy as undoing some screws putting a piece of paper, holding it flat down and then tightening the screws again. 
You have to do that before every print so it's perfect. But that is easy compared to trying to set up a filament printer. So that brings me on nicely to the pros and cons between a resin printer and a filament printer. With a filament printer, the reels of plastic are quite cheap and the price of the printers has come down quite a lot. But the quality of a filament printer is night and day compared to a resin printer. Visible print lines are always going to be there. So what's the pros and cons with a resin printer? Well, there's two main cons when it comes to a resin printer. The first one is resin is more expensive and you do go through a lot if you're printing quite a few things. And the second, it can be quite messy. You need to be safe when handling the resin liquid, whether it's water washable or the normal isopropyl alcohol washable resin. But in my opinion, the pros completely outweigh the cons. The price of the printers has come down considerably and this printer here that we're looking at today is only £150 or $200 depending where you're from. You just can't beat it. The quality of the prints, especially if you're doing miniatures, is just unbelievable. So why I tell you my overall thoughts, let's take a look at some of the things that I've printed over the past few months. So basically, if you're wanting to get into 3D printing, would I recommend a resin printer over a filament? 100% yes. It's so much easier to set up and you consistently get good prints. I've never had a failed print since owning the Voxlab Proxima 6. At the end of the day, this printer is easy to use, easy to set up, and just gives amazing prints every time. So that about wraps it up for this video. I just want to say thank you to everyone that subscribed already and to all the comments that have been left under each video. Thank you guys so much, you're really helping me grow this channel. So, I'm JP, you've been watching Alien and Gaming Tech, and I'll catch you in the next one.